There will be 20 empty chairs at the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony in Oslo on Friday. One for the laureate, Liu Jiabo, who's languishing in a Chinese jail. One for China and 18 for countries which have seemingly succumbed to Chinese government pressure to stay away. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, reports on the most controversial Nobel Awards ceremony for many years. Liu Xiaobo filmed just before he was imprisoned in 2008, talking about police surveillance and watching his younger self in Tiananmen Square in 1989. As he languishes in jail, on Friday the Peace Prize will be symbolically presented to an empty chair and there'll be fewer diplomats there than usual because China sent a letter to all embassies in Oslo threatening consequences if they attended. 19 of the 65 countries with embassies in Oslo have declined to attend. Some, such as Cuba, Morocco and Saudi Arabia, identify with China's stance on human rights and dissidents. Others, including Russia, Venezuela and Sudan, generally take a pro-China, anti-Western position, while a growing number of countries fear jeopardizing Chinese investment and trade deals. More than 100 nations and organizations in the world have clearly presented their support for China's stance to oppose the Nobel Prize Committee this year. I think this has fully proven that the majority of the international society don't accept the wrong decision of the Nobel Prize Committee. Zhang Jinyan is another dissident whose husband, like Liu Xiaobo, is in prison for his writing. I know that many countries now consider economic interest and trade as their priorities during their everyday international dealings. However, the principle of applying universal human rights and the desire of many Chinese people requires everyone to make human rights a priority. The artist Ai Weiwei tried to leave China last week on what he said was an unrelated trip. But he, like many others, was turned back at the airport. He took it lightly, but the Chinese Communist Party is determined to stop anyone living in the country from attending this controversial ceremony. The most successful prizes have indeed been the most controversial prizes. I mean, uh, when Karl von Osiecki received the prize for 1935, Hitler became furious. When uh, Andrei Sakharov and Lech Walesa received their prizes, the old men in the Kremlin became furious. When uh, Dalai Lama and Leo Xiaobo received uh, the prize, the Chinese authorities became furious. But these prizes stand out uh, in our uh, history. Uh, the committee was prepared to speak up for human rights where, when many uh, governments, uh, for various reasons, uh, held back. On Sunday, democracy activists marched through the streets of Hong Kong in honor of Liu Xiaobo. Anyone who did that in mainland China would be arrested. The Chinese government says the prize shows Western disrespect for China. But the pressure they've put on diplomats and dissidents not to attend the ceremony shows that as they gain more power and influence in the world, China's rulers really don't care what anyone thinks. Lindsay Hilsom, tonight's main news, the WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been refused bail as Sweden seeks to extradite him on allegations of sexual assault. Justice Secretary Ken Clark told this programme British courts would be totally objective and he would be astonished if there were any subplot. We're back tomorrow at 7. That's Channel 4 News from Krishnan and from me. Good evening.